Hi, I'm Melissa Stutter, and I've been asked by the editors of the Steel Toe Review to read you a passage from my short story, Serial Killers, which appeared in their March 2011 issue. Serial Killers has been nominated for a Best in the Net Award, and will also be appearing in the Steel Toe Review Anthology. It's part of a collection of dark humor short stories I'm working on that are set in the fictional town of Halfway, Texas. The section I'll read is about a third of the way into the story and occurs shortly after Darlene and Mary Lou's pa has accidentally run over and killed all four of the grandparents with a tractor. It wasn't long after the disappearance of Mary Lou's grandparents that the sightings began. Her sister Darlene had come on home from school for the summer and had been told to beware of Yankee New Yorker serial killers when she stopped at a gas station right outside of town to buy some beef jerky as gifts for the family. No one had ever called to tell her what had happened because, well, how do you say such a thing over the phone? And so it was that when she showed up, it was under the delusion that all four of her grandparents had been kidnapped by serial killers from up north. I'll never forget her walking in the front door with that pretty maroon Texas A&M basket full of beef jerky and that terrified, confused look on her face. Oh, Ma, Darlene exclaimed, bursting in through the front door. She looked like a bull shooting into an arena as she dropped the basket on the floor and rushed to hug her mom. Oh, Ma, it's just awful, she said. Just awful. We gotta find them. We just gotta. She was crying and sniffling all over the place and had begun to hyperventilate a bit. Shouldn't we tell her the truth, Mary Lou asked, looking over at her mom. Well, I don't see why not, Ma Boone said, patting Darlene on the shoulder. She's already upset. Ma Boone took her by the hand and led her over to the couch. Sit down, Darlene, she said. I got something to tell you. Darlene sat down. As a rule, people did what Ma Boone said without asking why. There was always a good reason. Now, Darlene, there's no easy way to say this, so I'm just going to come on out with it, okay? Darlene nodded wide-eyed. Darlene, your pa, he ran right over all four of your grandparents with the tractor when they was out on the lawn there playing cards. They're not kidnapped. They're dead. And chopped up itty-bittier than chunks in a compost heap besides. It was kind of like ripping a band-aid off real fast. For a minute, there was dead silence in the room, and then Darlene began to laugh hysterically. Every time she tried to stop and say something, she just started back up again, laughing harder and harder each time. We thought she'd never like to and quit until finally we were all laughing, hooting, and slapping our legs with her. It was what they call contagious laughter. It was catching on, and we just couldn't get it to stop. Darlene finally got up and headed towards Grandpa Boone's bedroom. Grandpa Boone, you old devil, come on out here, she said. We followed her into the room. She walked in and, not seeing Grandpa Boone, popped around the corner that led to his bathroom. Boo, she called out, but no one answered. She walked deeper into the bathroom, to the little room inside the bathroom, the one that had only a toilet in it. The toilet seat was down, and as soon as she saw it, she knew. My God, he is dead, she said, finally understanding that this was no joke.